Congressman Matt Gates. He serves on a number of key committees, including Judiciary, Budget, and Armed Services. Congressman, great to see you. Uh, the Congress has just been told to go to hell again. Uh, are you guys ever going to get tired of that? I'm pretty tired of it already, Lou. And Lisa Page and Peter Strzok are showing the country how guilty people behave. Lisa Page ignored a congressional subpoena, just like she ignored her obligation to conduct herself at the FBI, free from the type of bias that we saw reflected over and over again. The inspector general has already said that the bias of Lisa Page and Peter Strzok cast a cloud over their investigative activities, and I think the American people deserve answers. We need to know why Lisa Page was saying now she must win regarding Hillary Clinton when she was supposed to be investigating her. This is conduct that we cannot stand for. We need answers, and it means Lisa Page either shows up this week in Congress to answer questions or she should face contempt proceedings. Facing contempt, uh, it's been threatened uh, throughout uh, by Chairman uh, Nunes of the Intelligence Committee. Uh, it's been uh, threatened by various. Uh, uh, committees. Nothing has happened to this point, Congressman. Uh, and we are not hearing anything, really, uh, we the people, because the hearings are closed door for the uh, greater part, and, uh, and the witnesses hardly seem like they're being very cooperative. And I can't say the questions have been focused like lasers uh, toward uh, getting the truth, but more like getting a soundbite on a local newscast. Well, there was a lot of truth that we got out of Peter Strzok, and we'll hear from him tomorrow, Lou. What you'll be most surprised by in Peter Strzok's testimony is that when Robert Mueller found out that Strzok was sending these biased text messages, he didn't ask about a single one of them. He didn't ask about how uh, Strzok uh, could hold these views about stopping Trump from being president or de-emphasizing the Hillary Clinton email investigation so that he could make a mountain out of a molehill regarding the, yeah. the alleged connections between Trump and Russia. So time and again, Strzok showed bias, and Mueller didn't ask about it, which probably means he didn't want to hear the answers. That's the real story that we'll expose tomorrow. Either that, there's another possibility, it seems to me, that uh, could be uh, uh, quite uh, credible, and that is that that was probably uh, something that, uh, that Robert Mueller was looking for uh, to certify his bona fides to be part of the witch hunt uh, that he's leading. It would be hard to defend Robert Mueller's selection of his staff. Whether it was Lisa Page and Peter Strzok, who were on the Hillary Clinton email scandal, then worked uh, at the FBI and then were drafted onto the Mueller probe, or whether it's folks like Andrew Weissman, who attended Hillary Clinton's election night party, or Jeannie Rhee, who defended the Clinton right. Foundation. Time and again, you've got Robert Mueller fishing out of the Never Trump Aquarium to assemble his team. I, I have to say and give credit to. Uh, Speaker Ryan finally mm -hmm. defending Jim Jordan. Uh, Congressman Jordan, uh, as I said on this broadcast, having I, I just couldn't believe that Ryan would persist so long in refusing to acknowledge the man's integrity, his service. Uh, and, and finally today, Speaker Ryan steps up in his behalf and acknowledges who Jim Jordan is. Your thoughts? Well, I agree with you. That was right of Speaker Ryan to do, and I'm glad that he did it. Jim Jordan is a man of integrity, and these attacks against him are a direct consequence of the outstanding oversight work that Jim Jordan is doing. If Jim Jordan was not after the Department of Justice and the FBI, he would not be dealing with these allegations. They are totally false. I am confident in that to my core. And look, Lou, how is Jim Jordan supposed to prove that he didn't know something 30 years ago when he was a 21-year-old assistant coach? It is an impossible position to be in, and it is outrageous. And we have to confront it for what it is. Absolutely. It is a, a, it is a smear uh, of the worst kind. And uh, it also, when we talk about the proximity to the cause, it was uh, only a matter of a day or two uh, from his announcement that he was going to run for Speaker of the House, uh, that this smear campaign began, right? 
Well, the timing is very suspect. To me, what's most suspicious is that right after Jim Jordan brought to the floor the question of the Department of Justice's complete mm -hmm. delay in turning over documents, it's only days after that when he elevates yeah. the contentiousness of that issue. That I think there are people that have some loose affiliation with the deep state that are out to get Jim Jordan, and this is the way that they're manifesting their hatred for a man who's doing everything to fight for the regular folks in this country who want, demand, and deserve the truth. A, a mission that you are also on, and we appreciate uh, both you and Congressman Jordan. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank appreciate you, Lou. It. Matt Gates.